Blackmagic have just announced they've launched a major update to DaVinci Resolve 18.5. I'm going to download the public beta, install it, go over what's new. Apparently there's over 150 features with a big push on AI tools. So let's see what's in there and let's have a mess around. Right, here we are, loading up DaVinci Resolve Studio 18.5. Open my test project. So I've got a clip shot on an Ursa Mini G2 of me talking here in one of my other YouTube videos. Let's see if the auto transcript or caption can work. We click upon me and hit the that. Transcribing audio, initializing, analyzing clip. And I speed 16.8 times. This is quite a long clip. My PC is on a really old Ryzen CPU first generation, but I do have a 3060 RTX. So, but nothing crazy, nothing super high end. Normally, my old workflow before this uh, new uh, Resolve update, as you can see down the bottom, I have CapCut. I would just export input into CapCut and get CapCut to do it. That's like a free uh, mobile software that a lot of people use for TikTok, real YouTube shorts. Uh, so I was using the auto transcribe feature in there with talking heads, corporate interviews or reels. These things are kind of part of, they're essential nowadays. Yeah, seems to work great. That's cool. So, paper rustling, impressive. Filming, that's me asking whether the cameraman's filming. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, let's say we want this sentence. What's the hook of the YouTube vid? So then we click drop that in the end. Oh, wow. Nice. For corporate work, where you've got long interviews, you need specific bits, that is going to be a massive time saver. Uh, <clears throat> so now it's getting to the auto generation of the captions. So if we add a right click and add a subtitle track down here, this is normally where you would have to manually type out. So you select nothing on your timeline. So you come up to the timelines tab across the top and you come down to create subtitles from audio. Max per line. I'm sure this can do some tweaks. Teletext, Netflix. It's got some presets. Let's have some Netflix preset. Create. <clears throat> Analyzing, initializing. Done. Okay, it's missed the first one. Not quite sure why. Maybe that's the case of it just being a little too close to the beginning. One year ago today, we decided to buy a kit of DZO Film Picto Zoom Cinema Lenses. Oh, perfect. Today, I'm going to break fast, snappy. <clears throat> like I said, I don't have the highest spec PC at all. This ain't like no M1 or M2 Mac or anything like that. So it's really good to see. This is the YouTube Shorts have with music in the background. Now, just to, for curiosity, I want to see if it can... My voice is quite a lot louder, I will play it. I'm going to do a breakdown of our Ursa Mini G. We used the V-mount plate, the one from Black Magic. So next, let's add a top handle. So you can see, there is some music in there and stuff. I want to see if it could still transcribe my voice with the music included. As this one was just my raw, raw clip with my synced. So we click that, we come up to the left, transcribe audio button. Analyzing clip. First thing I'll do is just have a rig. It's batch flip. <clears throat> Perfect. Yep. Did it no problem at all. And again, as I said before, if you wanted to take out a simple section of that, you can go to this monitor section about what monitor I use, and I can drop that in. And bang. Things are quite cool, and the glowing the dark. I save a lot of time for a lot of professionals. It's good to see Black Magic still pushing boundaries and still listening to feedback this is clearly something a lot of people have asked for with the recent boom in reels and 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 tiktok etc right so next thing i want to look at is my is <clears throat> super scaling we're zoomed in five times here looking at the g2 logo here on the side of the ursa oh see how noisy here on off on that's pretty impressive that's, if you've taken into consideration how zoomed in we are. Um, let's have a look at the record button. So down here we've got we've got hold still. It's, it's, it's messing up a little bit. I think you'd have to be careful with what you use it. But if you have some old footage or something you want to restore, this is pretty cool. You see all these third part uh, kind of 
uh, AI tools that are restoring footage. It's good to see Blackmagic implement their own that come included, so you're not gonna go spend extra money. So yeah, for, <clears throat> for restoring old footage, what sometimes is a must. This is like a good tool. The one thing I would say is this seems really GPU intensive. You're probably gonna need a pretty high-end computer to utilize this to its maximum potential. The next thing I want to take a look at that scene, what I thought was pretty cool, was an effect in the grading panel called Relight. I've just dragged in a clip from a music video here, so it'll be exposed. But this apparently lets you place lights in the scene as a way of color grading. To add, it kind of analyzes with kind of layers. So then it affects the highlights, shadows, and like specular highlights differently, apparently. But let's have a mess around and see what we can do. So this one is generating the map, and then I'm outputting the map, then telling it on the second node up here to use input two as the map source. So this one is where you could affect the, the map style. But once you've done that, you can just go ahead and grade normally. But instead of, so <clears throat> the way the grade is going to work is as I push up the highlights, as you can see, the hotspots created there. You can see that it's trying its hardest to appear like a virtual light. It's doing a pretty good job. Obviously, I push this one really far to an extreme. I should really be using my panel down here, but I, I want you guys to see what I'm doing as I explore these and mess around with them. Okay, so that works ish. You can see some weird HDR looking thing squatted around the edge. But in, <clears throat> in the right situation, subtler, this one imitates a spotlight. And then it's quite realistic looking the way it's hitting the wall. This might not be the best clip to show you how good this actually is, but... Another features worth noting is you can now export directly to TikTok, and you can upload directly as well if you log in. It could be useful. They have improved Dropbox Replay, you can now upload multiple versions if you use that. That's something we do use at our company. So that was always an issue where if you uploaded an, the same timeline twice, it would just make multiple uploads, but now it has multiple versions under one. Just keep things more organized and neat. Introduction of the presentation mode from Blackmagic's own cloud. That's something I really want to try. That's similar to what other companies are doing, like for my own stuff. So as we keep all our projects in the Blackmagic cloud, so that could be something that works really well for us. Another thing for if you use a color managed workflow and yeah, the introduction of the swap button just here is massive. That will save a lot of time as what you, as what a lot of color graders tend to do is jump into DaVinci intermediate color space. And then at the opposite end, they will come back out into Rec 709 or jump from one color space to another from like Blackmagic to Array because they have an Array look they like and on and on. And this will just make it so much faster just being able to hit a button that swaps to get back the other way. It just proves that Blackmagic are truly listening to feedback from users and not just implementing stuff what they think is needed. They're actually listening and implementing is what actual professionals out there are really using. There's been loads of stuff added into the cut page. I personally don't use this page. I'm really inexperienced on it, so there's not much I can speak on in here, but I'm sure someone else has done a good video on that. There's loads of new stuff in Fusion. They've took a lot of the color grading stuff, depth map, and etc over to the fusion tab you're now uh bringing usd 3d files what's big for collaborating with other people in 3d softwares it's all stuff just pushing it further on i guess it's stuff that is needed now as always coming kind of this industry standard thing taking over where adobe have been for the last so many years so yeah it's just good to see it all progressing on really you can now export jpegs and animated gifs cue the cinematic color graded memes we're about to drop this one's massive you can now back up timelines Modify timelines, you just come into preferences, project saves and loads. The timeline will automatically back up to uh, whatever time you set it to here. This has always been available on a project basis, but now it's available on a timeline basis. What's great for modified timelines, if you ever need to recover an older timeline, you've done some amends, but then client wants to go back. This is going to be great and I'm sure it'll save some many hours for some people working with. Another thing worth noting that's not resolve related, but is the update for the pocket black magic cameras these now shoot vertical again moving towards that reels and shorts and tiktok 
I think this is big black magic staying ahead of the game. This will rotate your menus. It does a clever little thing with a gyroscope inside the camera where it records that you shot vertically. This really shows you the direction that black magic heading in. If you shoot this vertical content, the gyroscope and the camera will automatically detect that you have shot in vertical. It will then automatically create the vertical timeline in Resolve. You can auto transcribe captions and get that TikTok look. You can then upload directly to TikTok. It just speeds up that workflow and I'm unaware of any software at the level of Resolve that can do this. I'm not sure Final Cut or Premiere or even some of the TikTok focused ones like CapCut that even they can't do this sort of level. So it's good to see Blackmagic in front of the competition, ahead of the game. So that's it really. I didn't want to make the video too long. Just wanted to do a quick video. because I jumped straight on my PC as soon as I found out that there was out. I wanted to mess around and have a look. I thought I'd record it, speak to you guys. Let me know if there's anything I missed, what could be good. I know it's like 150 features and as the days go by, we're all going to find more and more in here. But yeah, please comment below. I'd love to know what I'm missing, what more I can have a mess around with and find out. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.